Hi, I'm Ryan Dawes, Senior Editor at TechWatch Media, and with me today is Stephen Brown, the CEO of the Anywhere Company. So Stephen, can you just give us a brief review of the Anywhere Company and your key solutions? Sure. Uh, the Anywhere Company is a software as a service provider. We create a platform that allows people to configure transparency in their business, all the way from great business strategy at the very top and your long-term goals all the way through structuring that into your investment portfolio all the way down to tying that together with what people are doing on the ground. And the, the key value is really that you can create an experience, a digital experience for somebody on the ground that's helping them with their day-to-day -day work. But that's already glued together up the chain through the investment portfolio into the strategy. So at the top of the business, you have transparency, consistency, visibility, all the way to what's going on at the bottom of the business. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Um, so I spotted a uh, available capacity feature which took my eye as, as part of your PSA Anywhere solution. Um, that could obviously sort of maximize productivity while preventing individual employees from being kind of overstretched. How do you kind of avoid the invasiveness associated with the likes of kind of time logger kind of solutions? In the PSA world, it's not necessarily that big of an issue because most people in professional services are um, have some sort of targeted utilization, and they're used to being judged on that. Yeah. That same feature exists in our project and portfolio management side where you end up really trying to use capacity around individual people's time who are mostly internal, not necessarily having some sort of billable or revenue associated target with that. Um, it tends not to be that invasive for the sole reason that it's not really that granular. And everybody's maturity, and the solution allows you to, to change the maturity level, but everybody's maturity is slightly different. So with some organizations, it's, hey, the way we're going to do capacity management is we're going to say your team um, has a number of uh, story points for your agile work, and you're going to just plan across that. It's very uninvasive. Some organizations go, actually, we really want to understand what these people are doing on a day-by-day -day basis, so we're going to do daily bookings of their capacity against some some supply uh, the daily bookings of their capacity against supply and um, sorry against demand um, and you can get into a lot of detail so what most organizations have is some amount of headcount workforce planning all we're really trying to do is really glue that together with the financial story and uh, the outcomes related things that you have in, a, in an organization that's trying to achieve um, a good optimization of their deployment of resources. It seems a very interesting uh, solution. But what does the kind of onboarding process look like for a new client of yours to make sure that it, the solution works for that specific client? Yeah. There's no, no one-size-fits-all answer to that. We start with a set of templates. So um, we actually have five templates that are starting points. But depending on who you are and what part of the business is using it, kind of determines which of those templates you start with. On one side of the fence, if you're doing strategy, you're going to start with the KPI template or the project and portfolio management template. If you're um, on the product side of the fence, you're going to start with the uh, maybe the new product development template. The reason that these templates are fully configurable, so what you tend to do is go, we've created something that's a pretty typical maturity level. You take that template, you deploy it out, and then you're going to look at it and go, okay, what fits and what doesn't fit for my business? And then we usually guide the customer in a short somewhere between three and 12 week project to figure out what fits best with their maturity, turn some things off, train them for the ongoing maintenance and configuration, and really skill them up to start a journey that's not about where they're gonna, where they wanna be, but it's about where you are today and what are the stair steps to get you to where you wanna be maturity wise in a year, in 18 months, in 24 months, and really start that digitization journey, and the digital transformation really from a place that's really consumable today and create a quick win, but know that just by starting, you're going to have the stair steps that take you on the journey. Brilliant. So if we tap some more on your expertise in the field, what are some of the key trends in digital transformation at the moment? Um, the key trends are some of the same old themes. Um, what I would say the biggest change today that I see versus when I was in this industry 20 years ago um, is that 20 years ago, the the concept of digital first wasn't everybody's default position. It was, well, let's go drum up a process. We'll figure out how to do it on paper. We'll do it on paper for a while. And then if that works, then we'll digitize it. The big shift now is that everybody goes, starts, why would I do anything on paper? Let's start with digitization. 
And then that's going to give us more information about effectiveness. So we can use that data to really shift and change and optimize the, the process, the procedure, the data points in a much more structured way than we did before when it was really up to the whims of somebody on a piece of paper. Yep. So you touched on it a little bit there. Uh, what are some of the sort of key mistakes that businesses make during their current digital transformation journey? Yeah. Probably the biggest mistake is the business change um, really relies on you going up the chain and getting a level of detailed engagement with your senior management. Um, and what you find is when somebody fails in digital transformation, they never really had full buy-in at the top of the organization. And when I say that, it's, it's really easy to, to, to look up the chain and be like, oh, it's the management's fault, they didn't get involved. I don't really mean that. What I mean is, do they know about the detail? Do they understand what you're trying to do? Do they understand the data points you're asking for from the people on the ground? Have you educated them? Have you walked them through the plan? Have you explained to them why you're not going to, why it's more expensive to do something with a human being in a spreadsheet than it is to do something with true digitization and tracking and data and all of the things that make it repeatable in your organization? I said it better myself. That's everything for me, Stephen. So thank you for coming along and chatting. It's a pleasure. Have a good one.